If you've ever shot a gun and you've gotten brass caught in your shirt and your cleavage or if we're meant to, <laughs> somewhere in your body and it burned the hell out of you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, if you are wanting to help the channel, like and comment. The comment section is awful. <laughs> Just kidding, it's great. Um, it is my favorite part about doing this and I do appreciate you guys, so please, I'm always interested. I try to read every single one, but they are out of control. If you're looking to support the channel further, Gun Mag Warehouse. They're a huge supporter of us. They uh, help us out with money, and they do all these great things for us, and they send us magazines and cool things, and they're pretty cool guys for the most part, except for Daniel. Just kidding. I love you, Daniel. Go buy magazines from them. If you are wanting ammunition, LAX ammo, or plaid in outdoor stuff and all that kind of crap. Vertex, which is 25% off with Grand Thumb. Gentlemen, ladies, at Apache attack helicopters. Today, we're going to be talking about the STI tactical host. The host version being able to mount a red dot as opposed to the normal tactical version, which is just regular iron sights. So, let's talk about this. Now, before we get into this, Let's talk about my relationship with the company. So STI, good dudes. I'm actually friends with a lot of the guys who work there. I actually met up with them at TriggerCon out here in Washington. If you haven't been TriggerCon, highly recommend it. Um, anyhow, uh, I like them, and they sent me a STI tactical to review, and along with 4,000 rounds of ammunition. So I used all 4,000 in this review, plus another 1,000 of my own. And besides that, I've shot about a total of about 10,000 rounds through other 2011s over the last couple months. So I feel like I have enough information to be able to give you guys a good review on this particular firearm. Now this firearm is marketed to the tactical and the law enforcement and that type of community. So my review will be kind of primarily kind of centering around that. So some of the things that I say might sound unfair or fair depending on the way you look at it um, against certain other firearms. But I only do that because this is specifically marketed uh, for a professional use setting. So with those things being said, Let's get into the STI Tactical Host. Um, first off, this is a 2011. If you're not familiar with what a 2011 is, take a 1911, bring it to the year 2000, update it, give it a double stack mag, and uh, you got yourself a 2011. Now this one is in nine millimeter. They also offer it in 45 caliber, but you know, what are you, FUD? So use nine millimeter, it works very well. All right, like we always do, let's start with the heart of the firearm which is the barrel. The barrel is very, very good. Um, it is coated with, with a DLC, which is diamond-like carbon. Uh, it is incredibly, incredibly accurate. So with this particular firearm, if I'm doing the work on my end, I can usually get around two to, or a little, maybe a little bit more uh, MOA groups. If I'm you know, giving this to the hands of a uh, really good shooter, he can probably do a little bit better. That's at 25 yards. So that's really good for a pistol. And, you know, when it comes down to this pistol, absolutely I can make shots longer. I've done, you know, 100, 150 yard shots consistently with this firearm. At 50 to 75 yards, it's a breeze. So uh, it is a very accurate handgun. In fact, like I always say, more accurate than you. Now, I mentioned it a second ago but the DLC coating is also on the slide and on the frame. So I'm happy that they use DLC. It has really good abrasion, wear resistance, and all that type of stuff. And that's what you want with a firearm that is designed for duty use. So when we're talking about 2011s, you're, you have to talk about uh, slide to frame fit. So speaking of that, I've tested a couple 2011s pretty recently that had really, really tight slide to frame fits. Um, the STI tactical is a little bit looser. Now, a lot of people would say that's not good. I like the looser slide to frame fit because it allows for a little bit more of play as grit and sand gets in there. And it typically equates to a more reliable handgun. Uh, 2011s, 1911s are always a balance between those two factors, but I think they did a really good job, just like Triarch did in the de development of this particular firearm. There you go, one, four, three. Now, while we're talking about the slide in the frame to fit. Let's talk about the aesthetics. So first off, it is squared off at the end, which is very typical of many 2011s. It's very attractive looking, love it. Also adds a little bit more weight up front, a little bit more rigidity to the rail, makes for a very strong, robust platform. So I've been very happy with that. Now, the slide 
has front serrations. So I know a lot of people, when they see front serrations, they're like, oh, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be all operator and press check your gun and be like, oh, yeah, loaded. Well, there's a lot of hatred for the press check, but hear me out here. Um, I find it easier on a weapon uh, that doesn't have an optic to manipulate the slide off the front. It's just easier to go than rather than reaching back, coming from behind, come from the front in this case. So it's not uncommon for firearms to have something that allows you to do this. Beretta 92s had scalped front uh, slides, so that way you could grab onto them. Same thing with the Browning High Power. So it's been done for quite a while, so it's not like unheard of to do that. So anyhow, I do appreciate the front serrations. Now, being that this particular weapon has an optic, that's much easier to then just manipulate the weapon off the optic itself. But in case you don't have that optic mounted, I like that they included those. Um, these sights are, of course, at the height that is correct so that they co-witness through the optic. That is a big deal for a duty weapon. If you're running something that you are going to be depending your life on, um, as reliable and as robust as the Trijicon RMRs are and many other red dots, I still prefer to have a, a the ability to view through the window and use iron sights if that optic goes down. So they absolutely did their homework when they did that, unlike Walther with their tactical model. Now, speaking of the optic, the optics mounting system is very robust. And that was a problem that I had with the Glock MOS when they first came out their system, was that I was constantly having to tighten it. That is not the case with this particular system, which is held steady over 4,000 rounds, which in my mind makes this a very robust system. So no problems there. Now, if you're used to using uh, 1911s, uh, it's a very natural angle when you point them up. So you're gonna have to get used to bringing the optic into your eyes with uh, this particular model because you know so often I'm just used to bringing the iron sights up and that's gonna be too low. So you have to bring your arms just slightly down. So that's gonna be a little bit of a training scar for many of you who have run 1911s or 2011s for some time, but it's not that hard to get used to. These sights do have serrations at the back to reduce glare and they also have tritium inserts. Why does this matter? It depends on what you're doing. Now for me, I almost always have a weapon light on my particular firearm. Because of that, night sights aren't as big of a deal for me because I'm still gonna be able to see my uh, you know, irons when I turn on my weapon light. Now, if you're not using a weapon light, the night sights are absolutely necessary and they do work very well. No problems there. They're all green. Uh, there's not any contrasting color, but that's perfectly fine for me. Okay, now that we've talked about Everything kind of going on up here. We have, of course, a grip safety, typical of a 1911. You have to grip it all the way to release it so that the weapon can fire. Beaver tail, all that kind of stuff. Moving over to the controls of the weapon. Um, if you like 2011, 1911 controls, these are gonna be no different. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, we'll go over them really quickly. So you, of course, have an ambidextrous safety right here. Uh, it doesn't get in the way on the right-hand side, left-hand side, easy to actuate. 1911 safeties, when you hit them, they just want to click into the off position and they stay where they are when they need to be. So I've had no problems with this. Some people have complained that there's a little bit of pinching of skin between where the safety actuates and the grip itself. I haven't seen that. Now, of course, with me, when I draw my weapon, I'm drawing it and my safety's coming off right before my hands come together. So I haven't had that problem. Um, even together, I can kind of see where they're coming from, but maybe if you have really fat hands, you got a bunch of meat to get in there. I'm just kidding. It might be a problem for some people, but I particularly haven't had that issue, but I can see where the concern comes from, but that would really apply to any 2011 out there. Now that we've talked about that, let's hit into the magazine release. So the magazine release is extended, comes out from the frame a little bit more, and uh, easy to actuate. Magazines, of course, drop free. No problems there. Now, when it comes to magazines, um, I'm primarily using 17 and 21 rounders, uh, and that's pretty, they work okay. 2011 magazines have kind of been the bane of the firearm, the 2011 itself, for a long time. Um, it's just been hard to get them to run perfectly well, and I've definitely had that trouble as well. Um, some of my 2011 magazines work great and some of them don't. And they're also very expensive. They run between 79, a little bit more. Some of them are like a hundred bucks. So if you're going to get 2011 magazines, I do highly recommend the STI mags. There are some upgrades you can get for the springs that help a little bit. I have a couple of those. The standard STI mags work okay. The problem that I've had 
with the magazines is when I top out the magazine to like check round count, like I've been firing a drill, I'm like bop, 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 bop. I go to pop the magazine out. What happens is the firearm has a tendency to push the top round a little bit forward when there's already a round in the chamber. So when you pop that round out, it tends to catch, and as you eject the magazine, it either pops that round up or that rounds is slightly forward. So when you try to reinsert, you can kind of get some problems. So I've definitely had that issue, and that happens maybe about 20 or 30% of the time, enough to be annoying to where I see it being a consistent problem. So with the 2011, make sure that you thoroughly, thoroughly um, use your mags and make sure that they're good to go prior to using them for duty. Now we've talked about that, let's hit the slide stop. So with the slide stop, if you have like monster hands, like you're just like huge hands and you're like waving around changing air pressures and people and kids are screaming and running from you, you're gonna be great. You're gonna be able to reach right over and just hit that slide release on 1911, 2011, no problem. For the rest of us, typically what we do is when we reload, so you're aware, I insert the magazine and then with that same hand that I just inserted the magazine is where I hit the slide release to release it. So again, hit it there. And that's how I typically do my reloads. Um, again, you can reload with the same hand like you would on a Glock. And what I do is I kind of have to break my grip a little bit to make that work. And it, it's okay, but I prefer not to break my grip if all possible. Anyhow, slide stop, no problems. It's not extended or anything crazy to where when you have a thumbs forward grip that you're gonna be depressing it and causing it to lock the slide back or anything like that. No problems there. All right, here comes the unfair portion which is trigger. So if you're not aware, 1911s and 2011s have perhaps the best triggers imaginable in the firearm world. And that is no different with this particular weapon, which is the STI. STI has made great 19 and 2011s for a long time and they're just known for it. So so when do the triggers phenomenal? So let's go ahead and do it. So it is adjustable. I of course have mine adjusted to myself. So we have about a millimeter of play right there. Get into a nice little two stage. Just hit a little hard wall right there. 4.5 pound let off. Perfect for a duty gun. Letting it forward. I'm letting pressure off, pressure off. As soon as I let off about two, three ish pounds of pressure, it pops right back forward on its own. Hit that reset. It's good to go. Reset is important. I know people argue this, but I think a long reset sucks. So I do prefer a nice, crisp reset it makes for sh quicker shooting. Now, am I feeling that reset as I'm firing? No, but it means I'm having to move my finger less and it allows me to you know, impart less movement into the entire gun. So I prefer a light trigger or a short trigger reset that is you know, nice and positive. And that is definitely the case with this. We'll let it forward again. Perfect. That trigger is perfect. It's a light, it's like, it's like a tiny little baby carrot and you're just kinda breaking a little thin glass rod and you're just, Getting it, it just feels great, and there's nothing nothing like it. Now, a great thing about the 2011s is the grip angle. So compare that to something like a Glock 45. The Glock 45 has a much more pronounced grip angle. It's a little bit more aggressive, which does help with recoil and control, but a lot of people find that the 2011-1911 grip angle is much more ergonomic, and it points much easier. There's an old film during World War II where they talked about the difference between firing a revolver and a 1911. They talked about how moving from the revolver to the 1911, you're gonna have to kind of compensate because it's not as natural as a revolver. And so God knows what they'd say about the Glock about having to you know, overcorrect for that even more. But I do find the 1911 to be very much so a pleasurable uh, weapon just because of how easily it points. So when we're talking about the grip, let's talk about the texturing. So they have this kind of wood bark kind of texture that they got going right here. It's stippled and that feels good. It feels really good, it's nice and grippy. Um, it's not like overly aggressive to where it's rubbing your hands raw throughout the day, but it is just perfect for me. So good on them for that. Uh, we have, of course have a magazine well, it makes for very easy reloads. You can pop that out if you need to, if you need to conceal carry this bad boy, which probably not the best conceal carry platform, but you can. So reloads are a breeze. So now that we've talked about all that, probably what you're here to hear, what you're here to hear about is how does it shoot? What does it feel like to shoot? It's interesting. So long range, so shooting, well, by long range, I mean pistol long range. So let's say 25 yards and plus or 25 meters plus. Um, it is a absolute dream. I am 
hands down, way faster than a comparable weapon like a Glock 17 with an RMR. I can just consistently crush targets and steal at distance, no problem. And I think that's due to the grip angle, the light trigger, just how easily it points for me that I can easily transition between those targets. Now, when I start getting closer in, like 15 yards and in is when I start running into problems. What happens is this firearm does not have the most amazing recoil cycle. So what I mean is that when I shoot this gun, it has kind of a snappy but smooth recoil. It's hard to describe. It's a lot different from a Glock. So I kind of use a Glock as a base because Glocks are such great firearms. Now for me, when I shoot it, it has a tendency to reset a little bit high. And what I can only figure is I spent so much time shooting full-size 1911s and full-size 2011s that I'm used to the way they recoil and bring the gun all the way into target as compared to a shorter 2011 like the STI Tactical where that reset doesn't quite bring me all the way on so I need to kind of edge it, <laughs> I need to bring it all the way there by myself and I don't quite always do that. Because of that, sometimes I get a little bit of vertical stringing during my really quick firing at this particular weapon. I don't get that with any other pistol that I've shot quickly. Now that is probably a me issue, but I wanted to note that for you guys. Um, I'm going to be honest and say that the trigger, grip, and everything, and point, shootability, and pointability, and accuracy uh, definitely outclass the Glock. However, the recoil does not. I actually find the recoil um, less manageable than a Glock 17. I know people are gonna be like, well, it's a nine millimeter, you know, if you can't you know, shoot a nine millimeter, then you're a weak little, you know, whatever. But if I can have a firearm that recoils softer, why wouldn't I have it, you know, you guys calm down. So compared to something like a Glock 45, which I absolutely do, because again, we have short slides, longer frames, um, both hold, can hold, uh, you know, 17 round magazines. So very similar firearms. And I do find this to be more pleasurable in the recoil department. Now, for everything else, yeah, the STI definitely wins. But there are a couple other things that the STI does not win at, and that is specifically weight. Now, I'm not even talking about weight with all this crap on it. I'm talking just the bare pistol, no optic. It still weighs around 38 ounces. So it is quite heavy. Compare that to the Glock 45, which weighs in at around 21 ounces a little bit over like 21.75 and people are going to be quick to say oh it's not that much weight if you can't carry that weight then you suck well carry that weight over a long period of time over a couple months and years and it will start to weigh on you so weight does matter and in this case the weight of the sti does not specifically equate to a you know gentler recoil in my opinion so just realize that and here's the last problem well two last problems with the sti is price $2,500, it's quite expensive, and also holster options. As it stands, as this review has dropped right now, there are no Safari Land holster options for this particular firearm. Now, they are being developed, and maybe by the time this video comes out, they're gonna be out, and that's not gonna be a problem. But the fact that there's no ALS or SLS holsters specific for this firearm that work really well with it is a huge problem for me, because I do consider those to be the only like acceptable duty holster to be used. And this is meant for duty, which is why it's such a huge concern of mine. The other concern of mine that's not so much with duty use is practice ammo. This firearm does not want to run cheaper ammo. So by cheaper ammo, I'm talking reloads and I'm talking, you know, that really cheap stuff that you buy. It doesn't run it. It will run blazer. It will run, um, you know, spear lawman, no problem, but you're starting to use some of that cheaper, cheaper stuff this thing will absolutely stovepipe, and I've definitely had that problem trying to run that kind of stuff. So just let that be known. Um, if you buy a 25, you know, $2,400, $2,500 pistol, you shouldn't be running cheap ammo through it, and if you have to, you should probably go with a cheaper firearm and just train more instead of, you know, stretching your budget to try to buy this. So what does it come down to? I can absolutely see the merits of the STI Tactical. In a law enforcement world where every shot is accountable, this is a very, very precise, um, very accurate firearm. And that's absolutely necessary in the law enforcement world. So I can definitely see the point of it. It takes a lot less training to be accurate and precise with this as compared to a Glock. So there's a lot to be said about that. And again, if you train equal amounts of both of these, this one is 1000% going to be superior in terms of accuracy and trigger reset and speed and those types of things. It definitely beats up the Glock. In terms of reliability, 
Glocks are going to win. 2011s are very reliable firearms, and that's not, I'm not saying that they're not, but when it comes to just, you know, tossing this thing into the sand and just running this thing hard, this is going to choke up a little bit before a Glock does. Now, that being said, these are still very, you know, reliable. Don't think that I'm saying that this is just going to start malfunctioning on you and you're shooting it and it gets in some dirt. It's going to run fine because they did some really great things to make sure that it will. Is this firearm worth it for you? That is going to be hard for me to say because it depends on what you need and what you're doing. If you have the resources for it, do you have the 2,500 to drop on this and the extra to buy enough magazines for a duty loadout and enough to practice with it to be good with it? If so, yes, absolutely. Don't kill yourself you know, spending on this though. Um, if you don't, the Glock 45, the Glock 17, the Glock 19 are really, really good firearms that cost $400 to law enforcement and come with three mags and mags are like 15 bucks and this thing will run anything. Is it as precise and accurate and as fine tuned as a weapon as this? Absolutely not. But again, if you don't have the money to train with this, I'd highly recommend buying the Glock and then training at least a little bit more with this than you would with this. So good firearm, yeah. Worth it, hard to say. Gentlemen, what we know really matters isn't the equipment. If a guy, gets out there with a Glock and he shoots, you know, three, four, th 5,000 rounds every year with this gun and you're shooting 500 with this per year, this guy is going to crush your soul. So make sure that you get training because that is what really matters. So when it comes to training, great companies out there. We've got guys like um, uh, Garrett with Cogworks. We have Bear Solutions. We have Haley Strategic, who is, my, who is Travis Haley. He's a great guy, I guess. Um, definitely didn't abandon me. We have... Um, <laughs> We have Esoteric, we have Tony Cowden, Darcy, so many great companies out there that I want you guys to look at and people. Just do your research before you get any training with anybody. Look at them, make sure they're good. I can't answer all your questions on training. I wish I could, but I'd just be fielding questions all day. But get good training and get out there and practice. Gentlemen, thank you for watching and ladies in attack helicopters. And I've got nothing else for you. Okay, last thing I'm going to tell you guys is something my dad once told me uh, when I was growing up. And it kind of stuck with me. So I'm gonna impart that wisdom to you now. To you now. Um, he called the three bones and I was going into medical school. He said, hey, going into medical school, I'm gonna give you some advice. That advice is you only need three bones. And I was like, that's ridiculous, dad. There are plenty more bones. He goes, no, listen. He's like, you need to have backbone. You need to be able to stand up for yourself and what's right when you know that thing is right. I was like, oh damn. He's like, you need to have a wishbone. You need to know what you want in the future. You need to be working towards it. And finally, he's like, you gotta have a funny bone. Don't take your too, yourself too seriously. So I've taken those lessons to heart pretty well. And I think that they're pretty good advice overall. So I give them to you to now disseminate and possibly do awful commander's calls for your troops in the future in the military. Gentlemen, if you've gotten this far, you know I'm going to talk about Big Daddy Unlimited. It is like Costco, but for guns, so you have to subscribe to get into it. Is it worth it? I don't know. Do you buy enough things to make it worth it? It's going to depend. But if you're buying a couple of gun you know, things per year, it's probably going to be worth it for you. So go check it out. There's a link below. Finally, I want you to comment with your favorite bad guy gun from a film. I would definitely say the Joker's Glock 18, where it was, it was a... Con it was a converted Glock 17, I'm pretty sure, with like a silver slide. I was so down with that. Get in there, guys. Thank you. Take care.